Howdy, it's Tubal Cain again, and this video is entitled This and That Number 14, and it's been a few months since I put on uh, the last one, which of course was 13. I guess I am a champion of the obvious, but I'd like to thank you for watching my videos in the last year and uh, making my channel a success. Please subscribe and continue watching because I've got a lot of good things in store and I've got about 40 videos in the can that have not been released yet. But uh, several things to cover in this video and one is I was recently over uh, in my sister's basement and my sister is a hoarder. You would not believe her basement. Love her, but what a hoarder. Although her upper floor is immaculate. But uh, this was hanging on the wall, a stare at chart. And now I recall from when I was teaching that I had, uh, oh, there was 10 or more of these that were available to schools uh, in different subjects about all about precision tools. And uh, so I conned her out of this. Now I'm, I'm going to hang it on my wall, and this one is on uh, surface gauges. But when I was a teacher in the Sterrett books, catalogs, they always had a section on uh, things that they offered to teachers, to schools. And they had a film, and they had all kinds of giveaways and charts and so on. And, and you could order uh, as many of these as you wanted, even uh, for an entire class. But they had the... Uh, charts and tap things, saw blades, and even these, which uh, I think they would only give out one of these, or maybe they were a dollar. And I think this is long out of print, but try to find one of those if you can. So I thought that was interesting that my sister would have one of those on her wall, and I suppose it was there from the previous owner. Now, just to put things to rest here, we still haven't totally decided on what this thing is, but several people suggested that it was for drilling balls. So, who knows, but a, a one-inch ball or a seven-eighths ball does fit in there quite nicely, but I don't know how that would work because you know that the uh, drill bit would skid off the ball and it would have to be a soft ball. Yeah, a soft ball. So, that's another possibility for what this device is. This neat looking electromechanical device was in one of my videos on uh, what is it, and we had never uh, positively identified that, but somebody sent in, it was Jim uh, Buana, I think, um, that sent this in, and uh, several others did too, or they referred me to patents and things like that. But this is from the Bell Systems in 1966, and it was a plunger type switch. I guess it was used to, for long distance and, and all of that stuff. I'm not sure exactly how it was used, but they probably had hundreds of these in, in, their, uh, in their buildings at that time. So that's what that is from the Bell system. Old Ma Bell, broken up, but now the phone company is bigger than ever, the cell phone companies. In another video recently, I talked about different ways of hanging on to chuck keys, and several people said, well, use one of these key things. Well, I did use these in school because they made these specifically for schools, and they were in all of our catalogs, but uh, they had a little bracket on so you could screw it onto the, uh, the drill press and a, a, an appropriate size sleeve here that went over this. And I did use these, and I liked them. However, I had to buy them by the gross because they were relatively delicate. And as you know, students would leave this uh, in the chuck, turn the machine on, and instantly wrap this and stretch it out or break it or whatever. So that was a problem. Someone suggested using one of these ID badge things, but that's a rather thin string. I can't imagine that holding up very well, even in uh, your home shop. I guess I forgot to tell you that Jim Creamer also told me what uh, this device was. So it, it's a plunger type line finder. Well, I beat that subject to death. But I was at a, a recent garage sale. You know, I like my garage sales. One guy said, I don't care what you found at a garage sale. I'm not interested in it. But, you know, for two bucks, I was able to pick up this vice grips from the 70s when they were still made in America by the Peterson Tool Company out in Nebraska. but And I like these older ones that were, were still made in America. But uh, I can imagine this being under the Christmas tree because that's a gift pack. 
and what the man really wanted was a necktie and he got stuck with a vice grip so that poor guy had a pouting disappointment that morning in catching up in my old reading here and this is from 1934 you could buy an atlas lathe for $79 wow and at a church book sale and you usually don't find things technical books at a church book sale but this is a beautiful book uh, for a dollar practical ideas for machinists that will make great winter reading in bed and this book is the uh, Kent mechanical engineers book two inches thick another great reference book a lot of math in there but I love to have reference books Sheet metal technology, one dollar. I had a copy of that at the high school. I remember that cover. All about sheet metal. And finally, I already had a copy of this, only in in uh, it was soft bound. Uh, here's the Henry Ford shop theory. This has been around since the 30s in many many printings. And there probably are millions of copies of these. So watch for this. And you can also find this on the uh, eBay if you want some of those books in my video tips number 135 making a spill proof oil can uh, some time back I was accused repeatedly of having killed Smokey the cat but here he is three months ago when the grass was still green walking away from me with great indifference and he is the neighbor's cat not mine but he is alive and a well if you like cats now I have also been accused or uh, confronted here repeatedly with using a crescent wrench in the wrong direction and I know I inadvertently do that but I do know the correct way and uh, it's just that sometimes I'm in a hurry and I learned that when I was 16 working at the hardware store I was doing a repair and a customer said son you're using that the wrong way and he showed me so I have known since I was 16 and that's out of the ABC of hand tools I, I try to get a copy of this we used to get these for the school that was by General Motors but put out by Disney and it's pretty neat and they had a, a film too that I used to show at school and that guy's primitive Pete but you knew that so again when you're using a crescent wrench an adjustable wrench neither one of these are crescents that's a Billings and a Utica that we tighten it like this never like this it's harder on that movable jaw supposedly but I own over 120 adjustable wrenches and none of them are damaged in any way here so uh, I don't know if it really matters but I'm just telling you the correct way in my recent video about valves, how a valve works, uh, I mentioned that I would like to, to uh, do a video on hydrants. I've been thinking about fire hydrants, but this is a type of hydrant here too. And Bob Ackert out of Canada, not too far from Sault Ste. Marie, sent me this. And you're all familiar with these, used in the colder climate. That uh, This represents your wall, of course, so th th this won't freeze. Uh, this is indoors and the actual valve is way down here on the end so that uh, it can't freeze. Let me pull that out and you can see that the valve is down there. And this is the way a fire hydrant works too, only it's underground and it is self-draining when not in use and there's plenty of gravel down there to absorb that that water so that it doesn't freeze that's the whole principle of uh, frost proof hydrants and uh, uh, but how am I going to get a hold of a hydrant and, and they weigh 400 pounds now continuing here and I want to put this to rest on 22 ammo and its shortage and a lot of people sent me uh, comments uh, in that video where I talked about that but I believe that the shortage is easing up because I've been able to find a fair amount of ammo although some of the big stores are, have empty shelves and I now have enough of this 22 ammo but I never fail to go by the shelves and just check and I had recently been in Gander Mountain in Joliet Illinois and of course they were out and a man uh, standing there 
He was a Vietnam vet. He said, hey, you guys want 22 ammo? Go on down to the street to so-and-so, and they got all you can possibly want, and, and they did. It was two miles away from Gander Mountain, and this is a box of Federals, 325 rounds. It's not cheap. It, it was $30, but glad to have it. And then I was at Bass Pro Shop around uh, Thanksgiving time, and they had quite a large quantity of this. They had a limited of uh, one per customer, but there is a brick in a neat box, wooden box with finger joints, and that was $35 or so, and uh, there were people buying it like crazy, but I, I think that uh, the supply is, is getting better. And it comes to about nine cents a round. Well, it was one cent a round when I was a boy, and adjusted for inflation, eight or nine cents is about right. Although I do dread shooting dimes out of my Ruger 1022 banana clips, and that's what I like to do is plink. So I don't believe I'll talk any more about 22 ammo, and I think some of you are saying, thank goodness. In a recent video, I lamented the fact that I didn't have any indicators that read to the tenth of a thousandth. And uh, Nick Alstead out of Ohio, who runs a little machine shop, had a large quantity of these that were, were thrown away because the company wanted all digital. And it is not a company he works for, but uh, there, there was a large quantity of them. So he sent me a bunch, and he's going to send more, he's told me, because I wanted to take one apart for my... Uh, video how does it work but here is a beautiful little best test as by brown and sharp that reads in tenths of a thousand so you'll see that in videos from time to time I'm really glad to get that and you know that's a hundred dollar video hundred dollar indicator if you had to buy it and there, there's some other weird indicators that were made for special uses for inspecting and so on that are also included. There's a Federal. And then another one here with a fixture. Also a Federal. And I may take those off the fixtures so I can use them for other purposes. Also there's a fourth one here and I'm not going to show that because that'll be in one of my uh, What Is It series because it's a specialized indicator for a, for a certain purpose. Give you a little peek. And there's more to come according to Nick, and he's a man of his word. In a recent video, I filleted Billy the Big Mouth Bass, and that was How It Works uh, video, and you probably didn't see it because nobody watched that one, but as a uh, Christmas gift, a uh, white elephant gift, I received another one of these, and you know, these are such a, a hated uh, novelty, as someone said, they're funny the first time, you might smile the second time, but by the third time, you absolutely hate these things. That puts an end to that. No, it didn't. It's still working. That thing is durably built. I don't know. I can't kill him. I can give up. No, nope, there he goes again. Hope you enjoyed the videos. This is Tubal Kane saying so long for now.